Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan has taught us, you know, it's so valuable, mm -hmm. you know, in this in this hour. Just as David said, the, the word is like a light unto my feet. You right. know, the words and the guidance and the wisdom and the knowledge that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad has brought to us is like light to our feet. It mm -hmm. is helping us walk through this dark hour. You know, so we must always be mindful right. of the, the destruction that they want for the black man and woman. And when we... When we come to that realization, then we can stop hating one another, stop killing one another, stop doing all manner of evil to one another, and then we can begin to come together as a true brotherhood and sisterhood and doing for self, you yes, know, sir. which in turn will stop them from killing us. Right. Absolutely. We got a solution. Yes, <laughs> <Now> sir. I want to read this thing, get your comments, because this is, this. I mean, this is just... I mean, whenever you see numbers, it just stands out because it really makes you take a look at what's really going on. It reads here that they did a report called the uh, called Targeting Blacks, Drug Law Enforcement and Race in the United States. Um, this was a report put out by the Human Rights uh, Watch. And it says the key findings in the Human Rights Watch report was that across the 34 states, a black man is 11.8 times more likely than a white man to be sent to prison on drug charges. And a black woman is 4.8 times more likely than a white woman in 16 states. Blacks are sent to prison for drug offenses at rates between 10 and 42 times greater mm. than the rate for whites. Mm. We got to wake up, brother. Yes, sir. And we have to wake up fast. We don't have but a short time, you know. And the, the, the end is knocking on the door. Right. Now, here, here's, another, here's another piece. The study found that, here's another one, disparity by geography, the, world, the war on drugs in America's cities. It is the first city-level analysis of drug arrests examining data from 43 of the nation's largest cities between 1980 and 2003. The study found that since 1980, the rate of drug arrests in American cities for blacks increased by 225 percent mm. compared to 70 percent among whites. Mm -mm -mm. And then it goes on to say black arrest rates grew more, by more than 500 percent in 11 cities during this period and in nearly half of the cities the odds of arrest for a drug offense among blacks relatives to whites more than double. Mm. It's incredible. And then it goes on. It says, but even more troubling is the fact that these trends come not as the result of higher rates of drug use among African Americans, but instead the decisions by local officials about where to pursue drug enforcement. Mm. In other words, they're saying it's not even about black people doing more drugs. It's just about the officials in these cities just making the decision to prosecute and to give harsher sentences yes, sir. to brothers and sisters who are caught up and you in know, this drug culture. You know, I believe one of the um, ministries that, you know, we have is the Ministry of Justice. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, we are so desperately in need of a Ministry of Justice. We, you know, we need to tip the balance, right. you know, tip the scale. You know, where we need more judges. You know, my son said to me, Daddy, I, I want to be a judge. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, beautiful. Yes, sir. That's exactly what we need. That's we need more we judges. Need judges. You know, but if you have all young black men catching felonies, right. you know, then there goes, that, there goes that hope. You know, so, yes, th this, this statistic is very alarming, you know. And I want to say something that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us. He said... The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, one day, the white man is going to drop you. Mm -hmm. He's going to let you go. Right. So welfare is gone. So, you know, affirmative action, gone. You know, all of these things that black people have been dependent on are gone. So America has no need of us no more. So right. she puts drugs in the community and, they, you know, we need money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hey, they're going to pick up whatever is accessible to right. them. So now you have a lot of young brothers selling drugs. And, you know, the enemy, it, it, we're more valuable to him inside, the, behind bars, than we are outside. Right. Because they make something like 64000 a year off one individual. Right. It takes six. Now, if you give me 64000 you would never see me again. Right. Because I can invest this into <laughs> right. some kind of business to be productive for my community. Instead, you know, you... 
take the young person and you put him in prison for 15, 16 years of his life, sometime life. Right. So you getting 64000 a year for the rest of his life. See, so, you know, this is all by design. Right. And as we were saying earlier, you know, the war on drugs is very hypocritical. Mm -hmm. You know, just like in the Reagan era, you know, they, we know that the CIA was bringing crack Absolutely. cocaine into the black community Absolutely. to fund the country. Right. You know? So, you know, we, we're very uh, mindful and aware of these, and we must be aware of the time that we are in right now. We talk about the end. We know, you know, from grandma and mama that the end of the world is upon us, but we don't understand what the end of the world right. looks like for us as a people, you know. So once we become acquainted with that, then these statistics become more proof that there is a conspiracy to kill right. the next rulers that's to come in the world. Absolutely. And another whole aspect of that, and, you know, you, you touched on a little bit earlier, is that, you know, once our... Uh, youth, once our young people, our brothers and our sisters get caught up in this system, um, once you get convicted of that felony, once you go to the penitentiary, it's important to note that you never can repay that debt to mm -hmm. society. I mean, you should be able to because yes, if, if you get convicted of a crime and then you get your time, you do your time, bang, you should be cool. You should be able to step no, back on the streets yes, and, and, and make it happen. That's what penitentiary the word comes from the uh, root word penitence. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so you should be reformed in such a way to where now you can get back on the streets and have a life for yourself. Yes, but unfortunately in this system, which also bears witness to the need for a ministry of justice, you don't have any justice. Once you got that felony, you robbed of that right to vote. That's right, absolutely. That felony stays on your uh, on your record, so you can't get a job a lot of times. You yes, can't sir. get an apartment. Exactly. You starting at less than uh, zero. Yes, sir. You know, so that's very important to note. And as you know, we need some kind of uh, finance in order to get credit. Mm -hmm. So now, we, you know, our credit is is, right. is off, you know, and then most of the black, young black brothers, you know, have child support, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, circumstances usually force them to selling drugs, you right. know. So, you know, this is this is very important, these nine ministries. And if you have not been acquainted with the nine ministries, then we, we encourage you to contact uh, the Ministry of Information here Absolutely. in Denver, Colorado, uh, and get more information as to these nine ministries because, you know, the Minister Farcon is doing a great thing for our people and trying to help our young men, you know, it, uh, obtain some type of uh, work and right. some type of jobs and doing something for self. Yes, you sir. know, as you know, we we in desperate need of farms, schools, Absolutely. hospitals, houses, businesses. You we know, so everything. we in need of in, in every capacity. Right. And our young brothers out there, you know, if we can get a grip on their minds and put the knowledge and the word of God in their minds and turn them from their ways, mm -hmm. then you know we can begin to get busy doing something for self. Yes, and there sir. was no need. To sell drugs. Yes, sir. And for any of those uh, brothers and sisters who would like to get involved in any of the ministries of the Million More Movement, they could go to MohammedMoss51.com and just send us an email and we'll get your information, get in contact with you, and uh, we'll get started because we need as much help as we possibly can get. Now, I have one more question, Brother Chris, then we'll yes, move sir. on to the next piece. Um, this sentencing project and Human Rights Watch are urging public officials to restore fairness, racial justice, and credibility to drug control efforts. Mm -hmm. And they talked about in this article developing more a more human approach to sentencing. Hmm. <laughs> now, I mean, I, I agree. That's something that we need. In your view, what would be such an approach? To curbing the drug. Or just, you know, just uh, like if a brother is convicted of some sort of drug charge as opposed to putting him in the in in uh in the penitentiary for five to ten for five grams of crack what would be a more uh human approach you know what i'm saying yes sir well 